welcome our world champions from the United States at the World Mountain Running Classic Distance from Patagonia, Grayson Murphy and Joe Gray. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with us. Um, how is confinement these days, oh, Grayson? Uh, it's going well, I guess. We're still lucky we can still run outside, so I can still get out and get my training in and not get too bored in the house. Okay, and for you, Joe? Um, I mean, yeah, same thing. It's good. You know, I got, thankfully, I got two little kids and, and my wife, so I get a little entertainment uh, all day, so it's not too <laughs> Well, for me, I'm lucky enough. I'm close to Madrid, but 50K at Guadarrama National Park, so I open up my windows. I've got mountains. I, I've got a garden. How is it for you, Grayson? Where does it uh, find you, the confinement? Yeah, so I have trails about a mile from my house, so it's really nice to be able to just jog up the street and get on the trails, and then I can kind of disappear back <laughs> into the mountains. Well, you should know that here in Spain, we are uh, not allowed outside home. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do <laughs> I'm sorry. In Spain, they're quite strict. In France, uh, we just talked to Michel Poletti from Chamonix. They are allowed one hour to run outside. How is it for you in Colorado, Joe? Um, yeah, everything's still open right now. Um, but, Whoa. you know, I do think if uh, people keep on crowding up the trails and stuff like that, that our state might start shutting down open spaces. Oh. Um, so we'll see. Okay. Uh, the trails also. And uh, also working on my garden like you. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Watching the grass as it grows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, for those of our listeners that are not familiar with the um, World uh, Championship, as they were in Patagonia last uh, uh, November, a uh, uh, 14 kilometers course up and down the year before Andorra, uphill race now this year uh, and please correct me if i am mistaken in anything uh, there was heavy rain and strong winds when you guys took off a uh, terrible course uh, terrible weather but this is patagonia and mm -hmm. it did have a strong impact because you were supposed to cross over a river with a slippery bridge joe we will come to that with the slippery bridge later because for the mail race <laughs> it was quite quite a point with one of the favorites yeah. falling down. <laughs> like that. Um, the senior races they started in the center of Langostura, a mix of dirt roads, forest tracks, uh, <laughs> this funny waist deep and fast moving river crossing. And um, well, let's start with the the women's the women's race. Um, last year in Andorra, the year before, we had two Africans. Um, it was um, two Kenyans, Lucy Morugi and uh, Keplegat took gold and bronze, and Maude Matisse took silver. Now, Grayson, um, you were kind of a newcomer to this specialty because actually you used to run plenty of steeplechase. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How come you were, you know, uh, because of course you did great at the trials. I think you were the overall winner of the U.S. trials. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, how come that? Uh, what what got you into mountain running? Um, I just I always it looked like fun, and I never had the opportunity to do it. So last summer I did my first trail race. That's where I met Joe too, and I really liked it. So then I just decided to keep doing it because it was fun, <laughs> and I ended up in Patagonia. Okay, well. Joe, you're quite the veteran here. You've been up there for a long time. How does it feel when, I mean, um, <laughs> Grayson was born June 95. And uh, if I cor remember correctly, uh, you are, let's say, um, 10 years her senior, nine years her senior, right? Right. How does it feel to have all these young wolves, you know, coming up into mountain running? Because in your race, you also had like Andy Douglas and I mean. 
Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's really cool to see the the young athletes coming up and um, it's it's a good moment to like reflect on your own career and think about like what you were thinking when you were that age when you were running mountain racing. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's really special to kind of see the, that new age of athletes coming in and, and still pushing us. Well, uh, what I can tell is that the U.S. team this year in Patagonia was perceived as kind of this dream team. Remember the classic guys from the NBA? <laughs> you know, yeah. this dream team with uh, the classic runners such as Joe or Hayden Hawks or Mario Mendoza and the up and coming new talents. Um, and certainly you guys, uh, you took both goals at the classic distance. Um, Grayson, I mean, of course, Joe was among the favorites. He had fought it out with the Ugandans in Andorra, a beautiful race, Joe, by the way, uh, but he took fourth. This year, no Ugandans here, so obviously Joe was the favorite. Um, for you, uh, I, I, I mean, you were not really a surprise. You were the winner of the trials, but did you expect yourself to beat the Italians, for example, who are true masters at the classic distance? No, I had no idea what was going to happen. I remember asking a bunch of people. I asked Joe, too. I was like, what do I expect? I have no idea what to even expect to happen. Um, and I had been pretty sick the morning of the race, so I didn't even know if I would be able to finish. So the goal of the day was to enjoy it and try and learn something. It was not to try and win the whole thing, even though that happened. <laughs> well, there <laughs> <laughs> the way I remember it, uh, Grayson, is that um, basically uh, you really flew in the fast sections because there were fast sections and then there were kind of gnarly trails on the forest, Patagonian forest, with the, mm -hmm. the roots and the mud and the, and the yeah. weed. <laughs> uh, but there were yeah. some more runners coming up. I remember correctly... Um, Ponset and Williams, who took silver and bronze. Um, how did you How did you feel? Um, how did the it race, feel to you? I just. Oh, how did it feel to what? To you. I mean, you were you really took up strong. Um, did you feel like it would be too long for you, or did you feel you hit the right pace from the beginning? If no, yeah. It, Like all things considered, it's a pretty short race actually, and I was just gonna pace it and kind of run my own race, and I ended up in front, and I just figured I'll keep running what feels good to me until I guess I get caught, or I don't, and I just ended up not getting caught. Um, but like I said, the plan was not to win, so it was a surprise to me <laughs> at the beginning, um, and I did wonder like if I had taken a wrong turn or what was going on because I hadn't been caught even by halfway. So that was kind of weird. Um, yeah, the whole race is kind of weird in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was unexpected. Well, maybe for you, for the girls, but Joe, uh, you just posted a defining picture from the start, I think yesterday, where you can see, I don't know, like a hundred runners. Uh, this is like a hundred meters from the start and you can already see Uh, bouncing up in huge strides, the Italian Cesare Maestri and yourself. And uh, what a race you had, guys, because it was like USA versus Italy, both in the Classic with you and Cesare, and in the Marathon with uh, Jim and uh, Pupino. And guys, you, you, the Americans, you blasted both Italians. Um, how was that well with Cesare? Because it was always a close race. Um. It was actually surprising, like uh, at one point um, I had pulled away from him and it, and it was pretty much over. And in my mind, I was thinking, you know, just to maintain the pace and, uh, you know, not do anything crazy on the technical parts on the bottom part. And um, I, I think I kind of wasn't paying attention, wasn't focused for a little while. And all of a sudden I was back and I'm like, what the hell? He's like, on me. And it was like a big shock, and it like woke me up. And then, uh, and then I started racing serious again because I was like, you know, I don't want to lose the race after I've led 85% of it, you know. So, um, yeah, Cesare, he's a very tough guy. He definitely, 
he definitely surprised me and woke me up. But I knew he was going to be um, one of the top guys, so it wasn't so much a surprise. Uh, even the mail race was a very close call. Uh, what happened at that infamous uh, bridge crossing? Because uh, uh, some other team uh, felt it was not uh, the best idea uh, that it was handled that that uh, crossing. How, how do you remember it? Uh, it was it was very difficult for um, for the men's race because it was so close up front when we got there, and so you know a couple of us fell down up there and just kind of slipped and slipped on rocks, and you know some people went through the water, and it was just kind of a, just confusion up there. And um, but yeah, I mean. It was interesting element to add to the race for sure. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was cool, but you know, if I was um, the race director, I I don't know if I would want it in my race. I don't want to get sued by anybody getting hurt. And as that you you wanted to share uh, a story before the race. Yeah, um, you know, I, I always believe like you should if you're going to say something behind someone's back, you should say it to their face. And I remember someone asked me if I thought Grayson could win, and I was like. I don't think so this year. I just don't think I think she doesn't have enough experience and I didn't know she'd be ready for that level of competition in mountain racing. And sure enough, she wins it and the race I definitely <laughs> asked her, but I told her that it's still yeah. that's what it should be. But you know, in hindsight, when I at the end of the, the race and I'm traveling back and I'm reflecting on my season and her season, I say, you know what? She actually did have experience to win it. She lost some races maybe early in the season, but a lot of it is like how you bounce back. And really, early losses don't really mean that much if you can't win at championships. And so in reality, she just gained some experience that helped her, um, you know, win a major race at the end of the season. Well, Grayson, would you think that's a sound analysis? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joe told me we cooled down together after the races and he told me that. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, probably a lot of people felt the same way. Um, I mean, I certainly did. I didn't think I could win either, so um, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, funny enough, um, you guys were the gold winners, but in the girls' team category, uh, Grayson, France took the gold, uh, Czech Republic took silver, and Great Britain the bronze. Um, did you feel disappointed by the team thing, or were you expecting also a, a team uh, medal? Yeah. I, again, didn't know quite what to expect. I think we thought we had a decent team. I don't know what the other women were. And all of the other women had been on teams previously, so I think they had maybe different expectations than I did. Um, it would have been cool to win a medal for sure. That's always a great thing to bring home a medal for your country. But I think at the end of the day, we all did what we could, and that just wasn't enough to get on the podium. Mm. Well, not so for Joe, because his mates and himself, they uh, checks again, they took gold. It, they're a solid powerhouse. Um, Joe, what do you think is the secret to the Czech Republic? Because they don't usually get flat out podiums uh, individual, but in the team combination, they're always so solid in mountain running, uh, sky running, whatever. Yeah. Um, man, I, I don't know what the secret is, but I guess mm -hmm. it's the uh, fact. Yeah. They do have a, a lot of mountain running there, and like in America, mountain racing competes with other genres like road and cross country and track, and so um, they're getting a lot of their cream of crop athletes being mountain runners. Um, same thing with Poland, you know, a lot of their top runners being in the trail and mountain um, in that genre. And so I think that might be part of the reason. You know, they they're not competing with a whole bunch of other sports. And you know, America's just such a huge country with a lot going on. So, well, anyway, it was a wonderful podium. The Czech Republic took the gold, the States took the silver, and Italy took the bronze. Um, unfortunately, we certainly missed the Ugandans. Um, they, right. they, they were registered. Uh, they just, at the last minute, it was that we learned. Remember, Joe, that they, they were denied a visa to Argentina. Uh, isn't that sad? Yeah, man, it is. Um, it's just one of those things that happen, you know, like bad things in a month, you know, a lot of countries in which to travel, uh, a lot of weird things can happen, food poisoning, losing mm -hmm. luggage, you know, it's just one of the part of the story. Yeah. Or remember the infamous uh, Buenos Aires airport strike 
that we all came across mm. when trying to fly into. <laughs> yeah. I had to stay overnight, you know, <laughs> Buenos Aires, because my connection disappeared. I, I had a different ticket. I'm actually have to leave last year from Zora. I was sleeping in the airport for like two days and <laughs> the concrete I'm back Jack for that reason. <laughs> yeah. Talk about yeah. adventure racing. <laughs> well yeah. Grayson, uh, you know, this year in Patagonia, uh, Spain did not uh, challenge and you guys in the classic race. Spain was uh, it's its first uh, time in the World Mountain Running Champs. It's, we chose to enter only the long distance. Uh, we didn't do bad. Um, uh, it's uh, gold in the men, silver for the women. And for 2020, Spain is expected to enter the uphill race in Lanzarote and the uh, long distance race. What would you expect from the Spanish team? after what you guys saw in Patagonia? Oh, I'm sure they'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with any uh, classic or uh, uphill uh, runner from Spain? Because they haven't been entering the World Cup yet, historically. Uh, you've run against Kenyans, Ugandans, Italians, Eritreans, like Petro Mamu. Um, oh. uh, you're right. Yes, please, Joe. Yeah, 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 I know I know a lot of Spanish athletes. Um, you know, uh, Jan Madrid, I know him. I've raced him before. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of good talent over there. So I definitely have come across some of those guys. Okay. And mentioning Lanzarote 2020, how would you feel about coming to race come November, provided it's safe for all of us? Uh, cross fingers. No. <laughs> to come race in the Canary Islands between the ocean and the volcano, you know, and race this about 40, 50 national teams uh, again for the USA. How does, does it feel challenging for you? Grayson? <laughs> yeah, um, I guess, yeah, it's always, you need to earn that spot on the team. So, um, <clears throat> We can. I I don't know what the selection process will look like now that we haven't been able to race all year, so that's going to be different. But um, yeah, it'll it'll be an honor to be able to put on the jersey again, and if we can get back there. How about you, Joe? Yeah, um, it would be awesome to race. I've never been uh, to the island, and you know I've seen a lot of pictures from it. I've had friends that have been there and said good things. So of course I want to be there, but um, you know. <laughs> make the team for it's always the first step well funny enough other countries have a tradition that if you are a world medalist you are awarded a slot in the next year's national team but the tradition in the states have always been the annual trials um do you think it might make sense this year to consider um, a complementary course of action maybe not for all the team but at least for the medalists, to uh, consider the tradition from other countries? Of course, you are uh, directly involved, but let's try to from the outside. Yeah, I mean, of course you want to go back. <laughs> We're biased, of course we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, honestly, I've been, um, I've been talking with people that are on the council about that, and I do think it is, it's a good thing to add. I think, honestly, the, the really... Bonus should be that you get a fifth, you get a fifth person on the team. So say Grayson goes to the trials and gets fifth, she's still on the team, and America brings five because they had the world champion from the year before. So it yeah. awards the country for having the best athlete, and I think that's fair. Yeah, I, do. I think it should. That's kind of how they do it in track and field. It's not just medalists; it's only the gold medalist mm -hmm. comes to bring them, and then plus their normal team. So I think that would be acceptable. And a good bonus. It just makes the winning part a little more valuable. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, um, world mountain running is now a relevant part of uh, world athletics. In fact, in 2021, we will have a unified world championship with four events, the uphill, the classic, the long distance, and the ultra ATK. 
Mm -hmm. um, I still get on with some, uh, let's say, uh, track athletes that believe that mountain runners are not fast enough, uh, that they're just, uh, but if I look at your personal best, according to World Athletics, um, well, <clears throat> um, if I remember correctly, and if World Athletics has it correctly, Grayson, you've got uh, 3228 for the 10th 10K, you've got uh, 948 for the 3000 meters steeple chase. Um, not bad. Yeah, I mean, it's good for, I was fifth in the NCAA, which I think is one of the most competitive races in the world um, track. And yeah, that 10K time was in the top 10 yeah. for the US. So. If I remember correctly, um, Joe, you are at 28.18 for the 10,000 meters and um, half marathon in one hour 03. Now, I wouldn't say you're a slow man either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think I, I'm not um, I'm not fast in comparison to uh, someone who is looking to be a finalist at a world championship in track and field. Um, but I think that's what's special about, say, myself and some other athletes who are versatile is that you can run pretty competitive in, in some of those events where, you know, you're not going to win a medal for sure, but you can compete with those guys. But then if you go to mountain running, um, something where it's steep or it's rugged, then they're completely out of their element and you still feel pretty competitive in that. So you can kind of jump to different genres and do really well. And uh, it speaks to, to your, your versatility your, and your abilities. Um, I can tell you in Spain, we've got the same. We've got, uh, especially in the girls' team, both Sela Aviles and Azara Garcia. And I know our sons, most of them come from your classic track and field, you know, much like um, you do, Grayson. And uh, when they entered mountain running, they found that natural talent. As uh, Joe says, you need to be versatile. But that's... Um, what would you think would be the best track and field specialty if you're considering, you know, moving into mountain running? Because I would have thought cross country, but when t talking to your mates at the US MRT team, uh, Richard mentioned that steeplechase has proven to be a good background as, as, as well. I was pretty as surprised, uh, Grayson. How could that yeah. be? Um, well, I think so cross country, all the track and field athletes here in the U.S. also do cross country in college, mm -hmm. all the same. But I think steeple, you have to have an element of strength and speed, which you also need in mountain running. Um, and then I think part of it, too, is just kind of being a little crazy to be able to run <laughs> in a water pit that fast and, like, not get scared. But I think that comes into play with especially the downhill portions of mountain running you kind of have to switch off that fear in your brain and just kind of go for it, even if you know you, if you wipe out, you're going to be in trouble, but you can't think about that in the moment. So I think that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Joe, uh, what would you say is that, because you would always think cross country, but... Um... Yeah. Um, I, well, the, you're saying like the sport that would that more suits a mountain runner. Um, I think it's not so much the, the event it's so it's the opportunity, right? Like mm -hmm. I think you see a lot of steeplers coming into other sports because the K would be something out of the norm. And also if you look at track and field, it's harder to make a living and niche event, even in, in track and field, right? There's mm -hmm. as many steeple. And so you just see athletes switching to the lack of opportunity. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think if you're good at cross country, if you're good at if you're good at running, you if you're just a good runner and you're competitive, you know, mentally, you can be good at anything. Now, whether you're going to be comfortable with technical terrain, that's going to be something, you know, it's a mental aspect that either you're born with it or not. You know, if you, I've known people who are unathletic and, and just afraid of anything technical, they practice for a few months and still suck at it. It's just that's not for them. You know, just like if I try to be a gymnast. It probably not for me <laughs> with the uh, you know Simone Biles. I'm not going to be good at gymnastics probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, how does it feel 
be into the United States team. And I had the chance to talk to Jim Wamsley, and he was absolutely thrilled about it. It was very special for him. He tried the, the marathon for the Olympics. He couldn't make it, but uh, he, it was totally out of his comfort zone, but he went for it. For you guys, how does it feel? And how is life in, inside the USA team? Because there's also strategy, team effort. How does it feel, Jason? It's it's really special. It's always an honor, no matter what team you're on, to be able to wear that jersey. Um, I think we have a little less of a team dynamic in the off season or outside of championship season than a lot of countries where we don't train together. Um, and you're only on the team for the trip. And then once the trip's over, you're not on the team anymore. So it's always kind of fun to be able to have to earn that spot back again. But Joe... Even though it's an individual sport, um, you also care for team results. Uh, there, there needs to be a strategy, does it not? I mean, what uh, yeah. event to enter, who to uh, feature in every event? Because, for example, in your case, you were uh, also a potential candidate for the long distance. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I think strategy plays a big part in it. Um, a lot of years, uh, I've kind of acted as captain for the team. and. Um, trying to introduce strategy in terms of like how we should race, you know, who should be on the front line, who should go out a certain way, you know, where we should make certain moves. And then, but, you know, you can only talk about the early parts of race because everyone's running professionally. So they have their own finishes and ideas in mind after that. And, but, you know, it's, it's important to have those strategies early on so that you know to put, how to put your team in this position early on. And, you know, we, you know, we've been in Italy. Italy, uh, I would say they're probably the best this country in terms of team tactics um, they've done well with it you know i've been to the world championships for mountain running you know, times uh and every year you see italy work together as a team they have a lot of tactics that they employ and <laughs> it's very successful they've been very successful uh so it's interesting to watch that and try to learn from it okay last but not least um we all want as many people as possible to discover and enjoy the mountain running so let's finish with the diversity thing um basically i think um, particularly the usa grayson has been very successful at driving forward the idea that this is a gender neutral sport um obviously in the elite category prices are the same for men and women everywhere i don't think anybody would consider otherwise uh, except for urea trail in france but <laughs> about them. Uh, so um, what do you think has been well done in the States as for, um, you know, having so many girls entering mountain running, particularly mountain running, because when we go up into uh, trail running or ultra trail, there's still a big difference between men and women. In Spain, uh, our average is 10% women, 90% uh, men, and, wow. and it's not it's not really culture because in Argentina it's like 30, 70, so it's far more close. Uh, but in the States, it's a, I would say one third, two thirds, even for ultra trails, for shorter races, it's almost 50 50, I would say. Right, Grace? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe yeah. I think the mountain distances tend to be shorter, so maybe that feels a lot more easy to tackle for a lot of women compared to like 100 miles, especially if you're just starting out. With running in general, you probably aren't going to start out with a 100-mile race. Um, but I think the running culture in general in the U.S. tends to be pretty 50-50. And I know, like, road races are pretty 50-50 split in the U.S., so maybe that's spilling over now as mountain running becomes more mainstream. Um, Joe, what has been so successful about mountain running that, for example, in Andorra, out of the six slots, in the podium, we have five Africans in terms of race, uh, let's say, or, gen or the diversity. Uh, and whenever you go to our uh, World Cup event for mountain running, um, the, the Africans are always among there, or the colored people. It, it doesn't matter whether you're Chinese or European, African. Um, but in other specialties of off-road running, there has been uh, not that success. What do you think mountain running has done well 
to to ensure that at least elite athletes from all over the world have an even chance? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think. It, the, it starts with your nation, your country. If they give you some incentive to be competing at an international mission or a mountain running or to try other events outside of mainstream track and field and road racing, and so you know, I think when you look at countries like Eritrea, they offer support. You know, having their country, their athletes go to the world championships and offering bonuses and stuff like that. And, and I think Uganda and Kenya have kind of started to follow suit. And so when you start doing things like that, then you'll get more of these athletes showing up for the exposure. And also, I mean, you know, there, there's prize money in, and anyone can win it. Whereas in some other races, you might not be able to get into the same race to compete with the best guys in road racing, the label system. Yeah. And um, maybe you don't have enough funding to get to the race. You know, they're not looking at you as who are you as an athlete. They're saying, oh, do you have this under your belt? You know, and so they're not running it. It's kind of like the Wild Wild West, which makes, I think, Realize how competitive not racing is in that regard that you're not protected. Like mm -hmm. anyone can race me and then get challenged. And we're at the track, you know, you say I got really good shape, I would on policy. If I don't have gold label status, I'm not going to have the money to get there and, and, and toe the line with him. And so, um, yeah, I think mountain running is very useful in terms of anybody can come and get it. Well, <clears throat> let's hope. You know, that it spreads to other sides of the sport, sky running, trail running, ultra trail, where it's not that common at all. And um, finally, as we are talking from Spain, I do certainly expect you both to come to Lanzarote, but have you tried to race in Spain before? Uh, Grayson, come on. I know you have. Uh, yeah, I wanted to race the Goma this year, but I wasn't given a spot. So, um, oh boy. In the future. <laughs> uh, well, but Andy Walker was coming from the States, if I remember correctly, and uh, he was coming from classic distance, and he mm -hmm. did awesome at Segama. He was leading the race up to the half point, uh, then Killian passed him, and then, but he still uh, held on to the top 10, and he ended up eighth. Uh, did they tell you why you were not given, granted a, a, an elite spot this year? Um. Yeah, they said that. they were looking only at the rankings that oh, are put out okay. and that I didn't oh, have so enough points. Really yeah, and so they were like, oh, you won, but you're still below all the people you beat points-wise, so we can't give you a spot. And I was like, okay, I don't know what to let say. Me guess, let me guess. Let me guess. They were all European. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were. It's like, yeah, I'm sure they're yeah. going to get more points. All the races are right near their home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the weak point about uh, the ranking they were checking at Segama is that it's a three-year ranking. And obviously, for a, a newcomer to the sport like you, it's a serious handicap. In example, if I remember correctly, Joe, you have been in the top five of the ITRA ranking like for the, fair, for the last three, four, five years. Right. You know, so I, I, I don't know, I don't know for sure, but I know I, I've seen myself on there before. Um, I've not really paid attention to that website. Yeah. So when will you see, see you in Spain outside Lanzarote? <laughs> Hopefully <Sorry>. next year. <laughs> Joe, your chance looking. I mean, does any race sound familiar to you or does it get your imagination or not really? Um, to be honest, it hasn't. Uh, I look at Spain as a place like I'd love to go there just to train and eat food. Like I've been to Spain a few times and, <laughs> and the food and like just the, the party, like the party lifestyle. I love like nightlife there. So I never, I don't, in my mind, I'm not looking at Spain as a place to go for racing. You know, if I'm being completely honest, but you know, with Lanzarote, of course I would like, I would love to go there. So, well, this year, uh, let me just I'll tell you that, we have two World Cup events there, which is um, Umaya in the Basque Country and Camfranc in the Pyrenees. They are both being moved back to September. So maybe take a look. I know that we will be so happy to have you over. Just, just keep an open mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, it's been Thank a you. great pleasure. I do appreciate 
Any uh, farewell words, Grayson? Uh, thanks for having us, and hopefully I get to see you in Spain later this year. Yo. Uh, muchas gracias, Sergio. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope that we, we can see you in Spain, if not for some paella or uh, <laughs> some wine or some of the great beef that you guys got there, but or maybe for some racing, so we'll see. And I hope to see you guys either at Pikes Peak Marathon again or at Leadville. I've had the chance to run both. Uh, I'm still looking forward to learn more about the United States, like Broken Arrow, next year, maybe. <laughs> or maybe, yeah. did they cancel, or is it is that one canceled completely? This year, yeah, fortunately. Yeah. So next year, meet you at Squaw Valley, hopefully. <laughs> awesome. Well, Thanks. Hasta la próxima, amigos. Gracias. Hasta luego. Mm -hmm.